Hello, comrades, and welcome back to the Shanka Show. This is Comrade Sergei, and today we'll talk about recycling in the Soviet Union. But before we start the show, we need to learn a couple of new Russian words. First word is makulatura. So any paper that you return to recycle, old newspapers, books, wraps, whatever, it was called makulatura. And it looks like it came originally from the German word makulatur. So I grew up with that word because while you're in school, you always had the drive to bring makulatura to school uh, to compete with other uh, classes to see who can gather the most amount of recycled paper. And the second Russian word is metallolom. So this is scrap metal. So any metal that you return for scrap is called metallolom. So metal means metal, duh, and lom is like when it's, something is broken, palamales, metala lom. So today we'll be talking about maculatura and about metala lom. So apparently recycling was huge in Soviet Union, which I find kind of strange, because in the planned economy without any worries about profit and cost, you would think who would care about recycling but apparently we recycle a lot of especially paper uh, i found out that close to 20 to 22 percent of paper that was used was recycled again and that's a big number when it came to recycling paper collecting maculatura most of it was done by schools we had a a lot of like almost competition between classes which was encouraged by teachers is to compete who can gather the most amount of maculatura, the most weight, I would say, because everything was uh, checked by weight, how many kilograms. So we would collect old newspapers, old magazines, books. Uh, actually, some kids were walking around the uh, area and knocking on the doors and asking, do you have any old newspapers you would like to donate for maculatura drive? Uh, so that was a big deal. Every school was collecting maculatura. And it seems like it, it was expectation to collect. Uh, so in one year, every pioneer, young pioneer, had to collect at least 15 kilograms of maculatura, of paper to uh, return for recycling. Personally, I don't remember walking around, going around and knocking on neighbor's doors asking for maculatura. But uh, at that time, we subscribed uh, to three newspapers. Uh, so my dad was subscribing to newspaper Soviet Sport, Sovietsky Sport. Uh, then we had always subscribed to the newspaper Labor, Trud. And then I had my uh, Pioneer Truth, Pionierska Pravda newspaper. And I believe it was also a couple of magazines. My mother was subscribing to magazine Health, Zdorovia, and I was subscribing to the magazine Uni Naturalist, so that's Young Naturalist, so that's about nature, bugs and birds and plants, and Young uh, Technician, I think, Uni Technik, so that was about uh, all the technical stuff. So we had a lot of uh, just uh, regular newspapers, magazines coming in the house, and since we we're buying toilet paper, so we didn't use the newspapers. Uh, so we had a lot of newspapers collected in the one month, uh, being subscribed to so many. So that's what I was bringing to school as a maculatura, old newspapers and magazines. And probably almost every school had a special shed, which had a locked door that will be open maybe once a week or once a month. And that's when every uh, schoolboy and schoolgirl, every student, it comes to school a little bit earlier and brings the pack of maculatura and we just use twine to collect all the newspapers then you wrap them with the twine so you kind of have like a little handle and then you bring to school and there'll be someone in charge usually older kid with a special uh, gauge to wait to check you the weight and then he writes down that such and such kid from such and such class brought so many kilograms of maculatura and if he likes you, he may add a kilo for you. Um, some kids actually heard stories. They would sneak like a, something heavy inside of the maculatura pack, maybe even a brick, 
to uh, score better, but usually you can get busted for that pretty easily. And I can only imagine how many rare expensive books end up into recycling because quite a few kids who are super competitive, even the Soviet Union who had competitive kids, they'll be so fired up to take a first place for amount of maculatura collected so they may be without asking parents or grandparents just to steal some books off the shelves and bring them for recycling and another thing could happen is quite a few soviet people you know we we were a cash society we only had cash so people hid or store some cash inside of the books you know they just pick some book and that's what they put their bills uh, to store and then your grandchild will quietly sneak that book out and return to recycling. So that was well known that the people who worked into recycling, they if they see books, they might quickly like flip them around, open the pages to see if there's any cash inside. And this is actually how I found my very first ruble. I didn't find a lot of money back in the Soviet Union, but the very first ruble, and that was a lot of money back then in early 80s, uh, I found while we were burning maculatura. So in the evening, we were playing at the school playground, and then we noticed that the door, the locked door to maculatura shed was kind of slightly ajar. So it was locked, but you can kind of pull that metal door in the bottom. So we were able to sneak the hand in there, and we started pulling the papers out and then burning them just to have fire to stay warm. I guess it was in the fall. Uh, so uh, some kid was carrying a bunch of papers and he tossed them up in the fire and I'm sitting in the front of fire watching these papers falling into the flames and suddenly I see there's a, a I wanted to say a dollar there's one ruble bill slowly drifting in the air falling to the flames so I jumped and I snatched that ruble out of the fire and after that every kid was checking all the papers before tossing them in the fire so that's how I found my very first ruble in my videos, I mentioned quite often the Russian word deficit, which means shortage. And I was one of the parts, one of the characters of life in the Soviet Union. You constantly deal with deficit, with shortage of things. And guess what? We had also deficit of good books. And my guess that the Soviet government, Soviet economy was so desperate for the paper to be recycled, for makulatura, that they actually offered hard to get books so deficitne knigi as we call it the books that are in deficit usually there was a foreign authors like Ahata Christie, Alexander Dumas and other classics uh, so they offered that if you bring for example 20 kilograms of makulatura then you get a special talon or coupon to purchase this deficitne kniga that rare book it wasn't really rare but hard to get so there was kind of system of encouragement of people to collect old newspapers, old books in order to get a right to buy another book. So you still have to buy a book, but you, they, in exchange for 20 kilos of maculatura, you get a right to purchase a book. How ridiculous is that? And that created another interesting, quite curious situation is when people were so desperate to get a decent book they will go to the bookstore and they purchase brand new books, the cheapest they could find. And usually they'll be like Lenin's works, you know, some big heavy books that are not expensive. Then they will rip the covers off and mess the books up so they don't look good. Because you can get in trouble with KGB if you bring, you know, 20 issues of Lenin's works to it, brand new ones as a mukulatura in order to get some foreign uh, author book. So people will do that, they'll purchase a brand new book about socialism and then they return them to Makalatura in order to get a book by Agatha Christie about, or you know, whoever else, like Conan Doyle about Sherlock Holmes, stuff like that. Jack London also was very popular for an author. So that was another recycling, buying uh, books about communism and socialism and then uh, returning them into recycling to get some foreign author. So as I mentioned earlier, all my school childhood from the first grade, I think up, all the way up to like eighth grade, that was 
always collecting maculatura, always bringing these recycled papers to schools uh, so we, our class can score high and make our teacher proud. Now, in the villages, I don't remember ever kids doing it. I may be wrong, but in most villages, you couldn't buy toilet paper, so the newspapers went into recycling totally different way. Um, but yeah, this is what I remember about collecting um, recycled paper and returning them back as mukulatura. But when it comes to metalolom, scrap metal, recycled metal, I don't remember uh, doing anything like that. But apparently a lot of schools were collecting also uh, scrap metal, old rusty beds, uh, whatever they could find laying around. But mostly metalolom, there was factories doing it, there was highly encouraged everything uh special so-called Svetne metallic color metals so like copper aluminum those were in high demand and uh, so those were uh, heavily recycled too well in united states germany uh, and other industrialized countries i think the main source of recycled metal is old cars but in soviet unions since we had such a horrible shortage of cars for people and i mentioned many times you had to wait up to nine years on the waiting list in order to buy yourself a brand new Lada Vaz car. So once you buy a car, you keep that car forever. You don't <laughs> recycle it. There's only way it can get into the uh, scrap metal is if you have some horrible accident and the car gets totally destroyed. Otherwise, people were fixing them. Uh, they were doing so-called capital remont, capital repair so they'll take the whole car apart engine apart uh, fix whatever needs to be fixed and put it together again so we didn't have a lot of scrap metal coming from old cars because people were just tra you know transferring cars from generation to generation keeping them in the family so it was not many used cars for sale and not much uh, scrap metal from cars well i hope you like this video so please don't forget to put the like share with your friends I'm always happy to read your comments and we'll talk to you soon. And welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, товарищи. For those who don't know me, my name is Sergey, and I was born in the USSR. Today we'll talk a little bit more about recycling in the Soviet Union. You know, I thought about recycling and I realized that Soviet Union on the consumer side was a very friendly for environment society. But on an industrial side, uh, we were polluting really badly. Although you would think, why would they pollute if there was no profit? You know, you're not trying to save money by just dumping uh, poison rejects into rivers or whatever. But the reality is, uh, Soviet plants, Soviet factories were polluting the environment really badly. But meanwhile, consumers were utilizing everything they could, recycling, reusing, because when people are poor, they don't have a lot of money and there's not much goods in the stores. Everyone is being really tight and very resourceful about reusing stuff. For example, even such a basic item like empty matchbox had a lot of different ways could, it could be used again. For example, it was ideal to keep salt 
So if you go on a long train trip or you go camping and you need to bring some salt with you, you just use empty matchbox, fill it with the salt and take it along. Matchboxes were also great to keep random buttons for your clothing, fishing hooks, and I used it a lot when I was going fishing and I needed to catch some grasshoppers. I would just use empty matchbox, go out in the meadows, catch grasshoppers by hand, rip their back legs so they don't hop anymore, stuff them into the matchboxes, and that will be my um, tool to take it along uh, to go fishing. And if your doctor requested you to have a poop sample, and I don't know why, but that was a quite popular thing. I think they were checked for worms. Uh, that's what ideal thing everyone used. They put a poop, piece of poop inside of the empty match box and take it to the hospital for analysis. Another interesting example is um, Finnish, which means from Finland. Uh, we had, it was a, in high demand, it was hard to buy, find in the stores, but we had once in a while for sale um, like a melted cheese from Finland brand was called Viola and it was a in plastic container which was really rare we never used plastic containers in Soviet Union so there was a plastic container and there was a picture of a pretty blonde girl and hardly anyone would throw away those containers because they were so practical so those will never end up in the trash people will keep them clean them and reuse them otherwise mostly everything like liquid was uh, sold in a glass container so milk kefir uh, any kind of pop even pepsi the only uh, foreign american uh, drink was uh, for sale in soviet union was pepsi so that was coming in a 0 0.33 liter bottles uh, buratina or lemonades any alcohol everything was uh, sold in a glass jars and those had a quite a high a recycling price so they will charge you additional 15 copecks uh, when you purchase drink and then you can get the money back when you return washed bottle back to the specific places where they accept uh, those bottles and 15 copecks uh, that was quite a bit of money you can ride subway three times so once again if we compare to new york city subway at two dollars 75 cents it's pretty much like a, what close to eight dollars per bottle or you could buy a loaf of bread for 15 copecks so of course every family was collecting their empty bottles and then returning them back for recycling and when i say recycling it's not like the bottles were breaking in pieces to recycle glass actual bottles were recycled reused for beer soda or whatever so we had so-called puncti prioma stiklatari so like places for returning glass bottles sometimes it'll be a building or part of the store or sometimes it'll be a truck parked and they will they will be buying from people empty bottles and of course the only time that people could return their bottles will be on, over the weekend because everyone was working during the weekdays. So I spent a lot of time, many, many hours waiting in line to return our glass bottles. And since the bottles were reused, the clerks were quite picky inspecting every bottle for any damage, any cracks, especially around the part where the lid goes on, right on the top of the bottle and quite often that's how the clerks were making extra cash they will tell you that there's a little tiny chip on the bottle and they refuse to accept it and quite often people just say hey, whatever uh, and they throw it in the trash right there at the point of return and of course then the clerks will collect all those bottles and they will sell it to them you know they accept them pay money to themselves and if every bottle is 15 copecks and you reject, let's say, 20 bottles a day, you can make extra 3 rubles basically for nothing. And I almost forgot to mention that before returning the bottles 
or any other glass containers, like we could return also jars and milk bottles. They had to be washed, so people had to wash them by hand, and also they had to scrape the labels on the outside of the bottle, so you had to work pretty hard to make the bottle ready to go before returning it and collecting money. Also quite popular for reuse and where one liter and three liter glass jars those were used for pickling for marinating for example like one liter jar smaller ones people would marinate uh, mushrooms for the bigger ones they will store juice or they will pickle cucumbers or cabbage and then store it for the winter a lot of things change in modern ukraine but you still can return glass bottles for deposit but the price is so low right now so most people don't bother it's only like hardcore alcoholics that have no income that's only people that roam around the areas and they collect any empty bottles they can find so for example i saw my brother doing it when i was visiting them in ukraine he bought a bottle of beer and we went for a walk so he was drinking beer while we were walking and talking and then after he was done he just carefully put the bottle by the trash barrel and I was like why don't you just put it in the trash he's like well someone can collect it who needs money and uh, earns a little cash from it but like it's too little of the money for me to worry about it so that's what you see in, in the evening the people walking uh, in Ukraine it's still legal to walk on the street and drink alcohol like beer maybe it changed recently but for many years there was kind of one thing my wife was impressed that you can just walk on the street and drink beer or drink like a you know type of like a smirnov uh, ice type of drinks and then people just drink it and then just set the bottles on the ground and by the morning they all will be collected by these rough looking men and women that run around with big bags and collecting all the empty bottles and of course now we have tons of plastic bottles like a two liter bottles the people can buy pepsi and coca-cola and other drinks and i noticed in my village that was the first thing that was such a huge disappointment to me no matter where i go in the village like i go to the river or go to the forest i see those empty plastic bottles laying everywhere before that the glass bottles were collected but now if people bring water or any drinks, they drink it and just leave the bottles right there. So it's littered with plastic all over the place. That's a huge disappointment for me because it was so clean, so pristine before. And now it's trashed and I see those empty plastic bottles all over the place. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Please don't forget to like this video, share with your friends on social media. And we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.